In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the King of Randoms Fire Fountain and seeing if we can replicate it ourselves. Today, like I just said, we are going to be building the King of Randoms Fire Fountain. The basic materials that we are going to be needing for this is a five gallon Home Depot bucket, a 550 gallon per hour pump, some vinyl tubing in a hose, some two pipe connectors, a 1.75 gallon drink dispenser, and a 16 inch plastic tray. We don't need any attachments on the drink dispenser, so what we are going to do first is we are actually going to take out every little attachment on the drink dispenser, and we will set it aside for anything that we might need later. Now the King of Random in their video, they say that you only need to keep one of these little rubber stoppers, but we are actually going to use both of our rubber stoppers that came on this. Pick this up at Walmart and I believe it was around 15 US dollars. And if you are wondering, I will leave an Amazon link in the description box down below for any of these products that I buy. After we have everything disassembled and taken out of the drink dispenser, what I did is I got two PVC pipes that turned at a 90 degree angle where they are bigger on one end and smaller on the other so that they can fit together and make this nice 90 degree angle. These PVC pipes also fit perfectly around our five quarter inch thick hose is what I believe it is. It is five quarter inch thick outer diameter and it fits perfectly with the PVC and it will just go together like that with the rubber seal in between them. Now the small side of these pieces is just a little bit too big for it to fit into the spigot. So what we are going to do is I'm going to take a drill and it's got a cone drill bit on it so that I can tell what specific uh, thickness the hole is. And we are just going to drill it slightly so that the end of this can fit in so that I can actually make it work. So now that I have the hole drilled to the perfect size, this can now fit in like so. What we are going to do is we are going to take a rubber seal and we are going to put it in on a smaller side of the PVC angled pipe and then we are going to slide it in just like that. Now when we want this in, we do not want it in the direction of it looking like a C. We kind of want it to look like a weird Tetris piece so that it will be able to come up through the bottom and then be able to spin around and thus create the vortex. And what I'm going to do here to make sure that this is a watertight seal, not only having the rubber around it, is we also have a hot glue gun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this into the hole. We are going to add some hot glue around the base and then we are going to squeeze this on so that it will create the perfect fit. Now that we have that created with the seal, that is what it looks like right there so that you can kind of see that it comes up to the bottom and then it will be spitting out that way so that it will be able to create the vortex. And what we are going to do now is we are actually going to set this aside and let the hot glue dry because it is not yet dry and we are actually going to start working on this tray now if you haven't seen the tutorial and you want to i will leave it it will be the first link in the description box down below so that it will just be a quick and easy tap tap and then we're there but what they do is they actually drill some holes into this which will allow it to drain back into the bucket where the pump is so that it can pump back up into this create the vortex and you'll be able to see it all later so what we are going to do is we are going to take this and we are going to drill some holes in it so that this will allow it to drain. Now that we have this, we are actually going to set this aside for a minute and we are going to start working on the pump. This pump that I have right here is actually a $15 pump that I got off of Amazon. There will be a link in the description box down below. And it is designed to be fully submerged in water while running. Now when we have our pump fully submerged in the water in the orange container, the orange bucket, we won't really need a whole lot as all of this is just excess. Most of this, is all that we are going to need. So what we are going to do is we are going to cut it right around there just to give us some extra room so that we can make sure that we have enough when we actually go to connect it to the drink container. So once we have it cut, what we notice is when we actually try to have it stand up, it actually curves over. We do not want this to work as this will be directly over where it is connecting to the actual drink container. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a low torch and we are going to heat this up slightly just to hopefully make it stand a little bit more stiff. Gosh dang it. So now it is all adapted. So now the official test. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs>
All right, we're not gonna be in here long because we've got a rock polisher going in the background and it's very loud, so I'm just gonna talk about this really quick and then we're gonna go outside. So that was the fountain that you guys just saw. That was only in my kitchen sink and it was kind of at an angle, so it wasn't doing 100% exactly what it was supposed to be doing. The king of random, the next two things that they did is they added LEDs onto the bottom and then they added propane into the canister. I think that we are going to save the LEDs for last. I don't know how well that's going to go going propane first, then LEDs, but this is just a disclaimer. Propane is literally, it's, it's basically a bomb. It's, it's a bomb in a can because if a propane can lights on fire, it's a, it's a bomb. There's no stopping it. If you aren't confident in doing this, please, please, please don't do this. I'm doing it myself and it's honestly really, really nerve wracking and pretty freaking scary because I'm literally playing with a bomb to make a fountain on fire. And it's really scary. So if you don't feel confident in doing this, I've told you don't do it because it's scary as crap. But anyway, we're done with that. We've got our propane and connector stuff from Home Depot, the DIY store. So we're gonna head outside, we're gonna set up a light, and then we're gonna get to it. Here we go. It's showtime. One of the big things with propane is you've gotta be very, very careful with it. Just kidding, we're setting that on the ground. Also that meme was 100% meme. I don't wanna blow anything up. We've got our base, we've got the bucket. We've got that, we've got that, we've got the pump, we've got everything that we need. But now we are adding on the fire stuff. And once again, this stuff is very, very dangerous. So if you don't want to die, please don't do it because I'm literally putting my life on the line just to make a really cool video because if this thing explodes, I'm in a heap ton of trouble. Here we go. What we've got here is we've got everything that we should need to connect it up to the propane. We've got a propane hose. This is a 12 foot propane hose. Uh, the propane can will connect onto this. There's typically an adapter right here, but I just took a hose and uh, a saw and I cut that off. We have a quarter inch coupler to a quarter inch, I believe it's FIP. Then it is a quarter inch MIP to a three eighths inch coupler. And the quarter inch will be going to our propane hose. The three eighths inch will be going to our uh, fire hose is what I'm gonna call this. We've got our hot glue, blow, blow torch, and pliers. And I'll explain what all of those are used for. The way how we're going to connect these two hoses is with these two adapters. Our quarter inch to our quarter inch is gonna go like that, just perfectly like that. And then this is gonna fit into the container, whatever the heck you wanna call this thing. We're gonna have it drilled so that right there fits in perfectly. Another important thing is we gotta cut this to a length to where it only fits around the container once. So what we're gonna do with this is we are going to drill tiny holes through to let the propane go through. But there's an issue because we have a giant cap on the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat it up with the blowtorch and then we're just gonna close it and clamp it down with some pliers like that so that it doesn't take up as much air going straight out the back side. So let's do that. There it is, just like that. It is not pretty done at all, but that will hopefully create enough of a stop that it will stop the air from just straight shooting out. We'll just hot glue it all into place, but that should hypothetically work. I am literally playing with death. I have water mixed with electronics mixed with propane and fire. Water around the rim everywhere we go, which that I believe has been achieved, except for right here. But if I splash it over, fixed it. Just like that, magic. So as set up as the fountain is, except for the propane being connected and everything like that, there is something else that's pretty cool that I want to add to the fountain. And it's LEDs. 
These LEDs that I have right here, they are light up and they have so many different settings where you can have different colors, you can have them blend, you can have them flip, you can have them switch. You can do all these different really cool colors and shades and stuff. And this is gonna be the last thing that we add to the fire fountain. The reason why this fountain is so cool but so dangerous to make is because you are literally combining the elements of death. You are combining the elements of water, which people drown in water every year. You are combining the element of propane, which is explosive. You're adding the element of fire, which also destroys millions of dollars worth of land every year, and it destroys uh, millions of lives. And you're dealing with electronics, which kill people. And that one's not as much as a big one, but water and electricity, those things do not mix. And so I've literally built a tower of death, basically. And this is probably the coolest freaking thing I've ever made if it works, which this right now is working 100% exactly how I want it to be. And these LEDs are waterproof, by the way, so. Okay, you going? Holy crap, that was huge. Oh, anybody down to roast marshmallows on water? <laughs> That's so cool. Those flames are bigger than the actual container itself. That's crazy. So now that we have the fire going, the ultimate test, marshmallow. It currently passes all the tests of everything good. Creating fire, not so much fire with the vortex, but. He roasted the marshmallow pretty good. I'm pretty sure you're not. Yeah, I know, but they could still be me to the fire. That's the matter. If you guys liked what you saw and uh, watched me make a document about what could have been my death, please like, subscribe. Comment down below what you want to see next. Share with your friends, get the bell on, and we'll see you all next time. Peace out. That is a lot of fire. And it's very white too, and I like that. I just roasted a marshmallow on water. Beach.